Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, and the Bible declares that we should rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. And let me declare that again. This is the day that the Lord has made, and the Bible declares that we should rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, we welcome all of you that are joining us uh, on uh, this evening. This is our midweek Bible study time, our teaching time, and we are glad that you are here. Listen, take a moment to invite someone, to share with someone, and invite someone to come in because I believe there's a word uh, from the Lord. Amen. We are in this Lenten season. We are getting close to Resurrection Sunday, and the Lord has been meeting us every Wednesday and every Sunday that we've been coming uh, together. So again, we want to welcome you to Christ, a family. Church. I'm Pastor Patricio uh, Wilson. We want to encourage you to share with other individuals. If we've got CFC family that is on, please go ahead and share and invite others to join us on this evening. I believe we're in for a treat. Not only is Minister Dantes going to minister in song, but also one of our very own, Minister Mache Brody, is going to be preaching and sharing the Word of God, teaching on this evening. And I believe there's a word in her mouth for you on this evening. Amen. Listen, we're going to open up in our scripture lesson on this evening. Proverbs chapter 4, Proverbs chapter 4, beginning at verse number 20, and we're going to read through verse number 27. We want to encourage you, when we come together in worship, we encourage you to get your Bible, get your device, amen. Don't just watch, but engage in worship with us in the reading of Scripture and in prayer, amen. So we're going to lift up our Scripture lesson, then I'll pray, uh, share a few announcements, and we'll get ready for the song of the Lord, and then the taught word on this evening. Proverbs chapter 4. A verse number 20, a familiar passage of Scripture, Proverbs 4, verse 20, and we'll read through verse number 27. Hear now the word of the Lord. My son and daughter, attend to my words. Incline your heart unto my sayings. Let not yourself depart from or keep your eyes from departing and keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it, are the issues of life. Put away from thee a fraud mouth and perverse lips. Put far from you. Let your eyes look right on. Stay focused. And let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder thy path of thy feet and let all thy ways be established. Let me say that again. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot also from evil men. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Listen, we're going to go before the Lord in just a few moments of prayer on this evening. And as I pray, I want you to engage with us. Amen. And right where you are, wherever you're viewing this broadcast, make it a sacred space right there and engage with us in prayer on this evening. Amen. Jesus said some things only come about through prayer and fasting. Jeremiah declared that if we call upon the name of the Lord, that it is the Lord that will answer us and show us great and mighty things which we know not of. So, Father, this evening we call upon your name, O God, and we declare that your name is great. We declare that your name is awesome. We declare that your name is mighty, O God. We declare that your name is all-powerful. Your name is sovereign, O God. And Father, we declare that you can do whatever you want to do whenever you desire to do it. So Father, even tonight, we invoke your presence to meet us in this virtual service on tonight. Let your presence come upon us that are here in the sanctuary, but also let your presence meet those that are viewing us on this evening. We pray for every mother. We pray for every father. We pray for every child, every young person, every single person that's joining us, oh God, on this broadcast. We ask that your presence, oh God, will meet them right where they are. For where the presence of the Lord is, there is deliverance, there is liberty. Where your presence is, there is peace, there is strength. So we invite your presence into these moments together, oh God. Even though we might be distanced and coming together virtually, we thank you that you're in all places at all times, oh God. You are our sovereign God, and we call upon your name on tonight, oh God. We pray, first of all, for our country, oh God, as we've been praying throughout this pandemic, oh God, that your hand, oh God, would touch the lives of your people, oh God, would touch the lives, oh God, of those, oh God, in this country, in our nation, oh God, that God, you will continue to bring these numbers down as we're seeing them come down. We pray that you will continue to cause deaths and casualties to cease. We pray, oh God, that, Father, you'll cause us, oh God, even as these 
vaccines are getting out there. We pray, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, oh God, that there be no adverse effects in the bodies of those that receive them. We pray for immunity, oh God, that we can get back to a place, oh God, Father, in time of normalcy again, oh God. Father, we need your hand of grace and protection. We call upon the great physician tonight, oh God, and we declare there's nothing that you can do. There's nothing too hard for you, oh God. Father, you said in your word that all things work together for our good, to them who love you and that are called according to your name. So not only do we pray for your hand to be upon our country and our nation, even in the midst of this virus, oh God, and this pandemic, Father, we thank you, oh God, for your hand upon our president, our vice president, oh God, as they make, oh God, Father, decisions for our country. We pray, oh God, Father, for our government, oh God. We pray, oh God, for our legislators, oh God, that they would come together, that we would not be the divided country that we are, oh God, but you would bring about unity, oh God. Father, we pray, oh God, for those in Boulder, Colorado, oh God. We pray in the name of the Lord Jesus, those lives that were lost senselessly, oh God, in a grocery store. Father, we pray, God, for those families, oh God, that lost daughters and fathers, oh God. Those families that lost spouses, oh God. Oh God, our heart goes out to them and we stand in the gap, oh God, for those in Colorado, oh God, that you would touch, oh God, and you would heal, oh God, that city, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray that you would give, oh God, Father, our legislators, oh God. We pray, oh God, that those that make, oh God, governmental decisions, oh God, give them wisdom concerning gun violence, oh God, and gun control, oh God. Oh, Father, we need legislation, oh God. We need you to move on the hearts, oh God, Father, of those, oh God, who are the decision makers, oh God, in Congress, oh God. Father, we call upon you to touch their hearts, for them to see the devastation and be moved to do something. Father, we pray not only for those in Colorado and Boulder, but we pray for those in Atlanta, those as whose lives were taken there, the family members of these individuals, God. We pray for your grace to strengthen and keep them. And God, we pray for protection, protection upon our children as we are in malls, our families as we are in grocery stores, our families as we are targets and Walmarts, oh God, Father, that we would not be fearful, oh God, but our trust would be in you and God, you would cover them. We pray for those that have demonic, deranged minds, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, that have violent hearts, oh God, that are filled with anger and hatred, oh God. I pray, God, for the healing of our land, oh God, and we bind the hand of the devil, oh God. We know the enemy knows his time is short. We bind every work of Satan, every work of the enemy. He has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He is the author, oh God, of this violence, oh God, and we pray, oh God, you would arrest the attention of the enemy that seeks to invade the hearts of people who have wicked and evil ways, oh God, who are mentally deranged, Lord God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who struggle mentally. We pray, God, for the healing of their minds, oh God, that, oh God, lethal guns would not be, oh God, Father, in their control, in their hands, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, come, oh God. Come, oh God, in the midst of our nation, in the midst of our, our country, oh God. So much, oh God, that needs to be healed and so much that needs to be eradicated, so much that needs to be fixed. God, it's only your hand and only your power that can do it. We cry out to you tonight, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you to cause us, oh God, the people of hope, to be a people of hope and not disparity, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. We pray for those that feel discouraged, those that feel depressed, even in this season, oh God, when they see things like the violence on the news, oh God, when they experience what we experienced this past year, oh God, uh, concerning civil unrest, we pray for the healing of the hearts of people, oh God, that they would not be discouraged, oh God, but oh God, that your presence would touch people's lives, oh God, and Father, they would come to know you as Lord and Savior. We pray for our country, we pray for our land. We pray for the church, O oh God, that we'd rise up, O oh God, and be a voice even in the earth, in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray specifically for Christ Family Church. Pray for its family members, O oh God, all those that are connected to our ministry, O oh God. We pray for their families. We pray for husbands and wives, O oh God. We pray for our single men and women, O oh God. We pray for our children, nieces and nephews, as it was our prayer focus, O oh God, on the day, as we turned our plates down, O oh God, that you would touch families, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. We declare in the words, O oh God, Father, O oh, oh God of Joshua, as for me and my house, we will serve and we will seek the Lord, O oh God. We pray for godliness to be the foundation of the families, O oh God, Father, that are on 
oh God, virtually with us tonight, oh God. That our children's hearts, oh God, would desire you, oh God. That men, oh God, in their homes would be the head of their homes and cover their wives and their children, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, not in a dictatorial way, oh God, but in a spiritual way, oh God, with love and compassion, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, we thank you. And we honor you. We pray for, oh God, the members of CFC that are trusting and believing you for healing, oh God, tonight. We pray, oh God, you continue to touch CY's body. We continue to thank you for total healing for him and for John, oh God. Total healing for them, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus, oh God. We pray for Yvonne's aunt tonight, oh God. We pray for Marla Jackson, you would touch her body in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we pray tonight for Nicole, oh God, excuse me, for Jennifer and Randy in the loss of Nicole, oh God, who's gone on to be with the Lord. We thank you that she's in a better place, a place of peace, a place of rest. But give the family grace and strength, oh God, to walk through the days that are ahead, oh God. Father, for all that, oh God, has reached out to us to pray, those that need transplants, oh God, kidney transplants and liver transplants, Father, we thank you, oh God, that you are the author and finisher of our faith. We thank you that their lives are in your hand, in the name of Jesus. Remember our children tonight, our college students, oh God, our younger children, oh God. Remember those that are teachers that are going back into the schools, oh God. Father, we pray for your grace and your mercy to cover us, and we thank you for healing in our land. Now, Father, we ask for your presence, O God, that we sense even now to fill this Bible study, this teaching tonight. Let your anointing rest upon Minister Mache. Let your anointing rest upon Minister Dante as he leads us in a song of worship. And let your anointing rest upon those that are viewing us tonight. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God would say to the church and a heart, Lord, to receive. We declare that our hearts are good ground to receive the seed of your word. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and we thank you. And we count it done. Amen and amen. Come on, can you say amen and even put your hands together at home and give God praise? Oh, we bless the name of the Lord. The Bible says we ought to clap your hands, all you people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph, oh God. On your most difficult days, you've got to shout unto God. You've got to get it out and shout unto him with a voice of victory and triumph, oh God. And we honor him tonight in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Listen, as we continue to move on, on, on in our service on this evening, we want to remind you of the importance of the giving of your tithes and your offerings. We want to thank so many of you that have been faithful throughout this year. And even as we've come into this new year uh, in sowing your tithes and your offerings. Listen, God has blessed so many uh, individuals. Uh, there was another individual that sent us a picture of a new home that they just, f just finished building and just finished up uh, in this year. Listen, God God is still doing great things. Amen. He is still the author and the finisher of our faith. He's a God that desires to give us good things. Amen. So you continue to believe and trust God for the things that you are looking for God to do in your life. So please make sure you go online, give of your tithe and your offering uh, on this evening. But then we also want to remind you, all of our millennial young ladies, this coming Friday, we want you to join with our first lady, Lady Mia. Uh, she's coming together, had a meeting with them a while back, a nice chat with them, and now having another chat on this coming Friday. We want to encourage you. Listen, millennial young ladies, encourage another millennial young lady to join with our first lady in Just Us Girls chat on this coming Friday evening, 7.30 uh, p.m. And listen, then this coming Sunday, we want you to make sure you're back online. Palm Sunday is this coming Sunday. Amen. The Sunday that simply talks about the entrance of Jesus into Jerusalem before we get ready for Easter Sunday celebration. And this year, we pray that the weather continues to hold up. Uh, if there's no inclement weather, we're going to be outside uh, for our resurrection service uh, this year. So we want to encourage you to come. Make sure you bring your own lawn chair. We're going to be right up the street from uh, the church, uh, Reedy Creek Middle School, 930 Reedy Creek Road. Right out there, we'll be social, social distancing out that, outside, but also we'll have some special treats for the kids, a little Easter egg hunt, because we'll be outside, as well as some goodie bags as well, too. Listen, we want you to be able to engage with us in worship, but also have an opportunity to see other members from a distance, socially distance. But we're going to be outside. We look forward to you joining us uh, during that time uh, as well. For all the other announcements, please make sure you go to the church's website and you'll be able to see everything that's going on here at CFC. We are doing our very best to make sure we stay connected. Amen. 
Praise God. Listen, Minister Mache Brody is getting ready to come in just a minute to minister uh, the Word of God. One of our ministers here uh, at CFC. Listen, God has been blessing us every Wednesday. Each of our ministers have been sharing during this Lenten season, and there has been a word in their mouth uh, to share with us, and I believe you're going to be blessed by her on this evening. Minister Dantes is going to come now and minister in song, and after he's ministered in song, the next voice you're going to hear is that as one of our very own Minister Mache uh, Brody. Amen. So I want you to get your hearts ready as we prepare to minister in song. Listen, engage with us. You know the song. Sing it with us as we go before the Lord in song and then the Word of God. Good afternoon, CFC. Let's just lift our voice right where we are this morning. God, you're great. God, you're wonderful this evening. God, you're mighty. God, you're strong. And we call you greater than any other thing that we face. Come on, somebody just lift it up this morning. Water, you turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. There's none like you. I can say these words. Into the darkness you shine. And out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you, God. There's none like you. You ought to just type it in the chat right here and say, Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. stronger. Lord, you are higher. You are higher than yes, God. And our God is healer. Wholesome in power. Somebody just declare our God. Come on, let's say that one more time. Our God is greater. Oh, oh. Our God is stronger. Oh, Lord, you are higher. Come on, somebody just declare that right over your life. Our God is healer. Awesome in power. Somebody say our God. Somebody say. And if our God is for us, yeah. God is with us, then what can stay long? And if our God, then who? And if our God is with us, then what can stay Somebody just declare, say, and if our God is for us, then who? the Lord on your side. You ought to just declare that tonight, say. Sickness can't stand against you with God on your side. He's able to heal your body right where you are tonight. I can't you declare he's a healer. He's a restorer. He's a way maker. Somebody just declare it right here. Come on, let's go. You ought to put your hands together right at home. And just say, can you serve a mighty God, a strong God, an omnipotent God? God, he reigns in victory. Yes, you do. Jesus, and there's no one like our God. You ought to just declare that right here, this evening, right in your living room. Yes, God, we thank you. can stand against God. If he is for us, who can be against us? I'm just so thankful for that song on tonight. It just encouraged my heart. And uh, I'm just thankful to be here tonight. I pray that everyone is doing well. And we are going to uh, get right into the service, into the Bible study on tonight. But I'm just thankful for being here on tonight, being alive, being in the presence of the Lord. Uh, one more time, I'm just grateful for how he's kept us throughout the day thankful for that wonderful prayer we had this morning the prayer on this evening it just sets the atmosphere uh, for the work of the Lord to be done and so I'm glad that you all are on tonight and ready to receive what I believe God has given me for tonight um, I'm going gonna, gonna go into a time of prayer and then we'll start 
uh, right with the scripture. Father God, I thank you for the service on tonight. Lord, I thank you for an opportunity, oh God, to serve. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you have anointed me and appointed me for this night, oh God. I thank you for the word that you've put in my mouth, oh God. And Lord, I pray right now, Lord, that you, Lord, will have your way in the service. Holy Spirit, you are welcome to dwell in me and through me. God, I thank you right now for your presence being in this place on tonight and resting on this word, oh God. Now, Lord, I pray, God, that we will be hearers and doers of your word on tonight. Let our hearts be good ground, oh God, to receive your word on tonight. And Lord, I thank you for every person that's viewing. And Lord, I pray right now, Lord, that your will will be done on tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Amen. Say hallelujah. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. Um, I'm going to read scripture tonight, and um, it starts with, I'm going to start with Proverbs. It's funny, the scripture that the Lord gave me for this message, pastor has read it already, so it just shows that I am in line with the shepherd of this house on tonight, and that the Lord is using us mightily. So I'm going to read it again, Proverbs 4, but I'm going to start with verses 23 through 27. Again, that is Proverbs 4 verses 23 through 27 and it reads above all else guard your heart for everything you do flows from it and I'm reading in the NIV version keep your mouth free of perversity keep corrupt talk far from your lips let your eyes look straight ahead fix your gaze directly before you give careful thought to the path for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, tonight, um, as I was thinking and reflecting on Lent season and how important it is that we as believers understand the importance of its meaning. I realized how this message that God actually uh, gave to me back in January really ties into this Lent season. And I just want us as believers to understand how important this Lent season is. Lent is a season of reflection. It's a season of preparation. It's also an opportunity for us as believers to take introspect and focus in even the more on the importance of Christ's sacrifice for us. It's a time for us as believers to check, basically check ourselves, see if there are things that we need God to change in us, if, see if there's uh, things that we need to focus in on more. It's really the time to focus in on Christ a little bit more than we are already doing throughout the year. It is a time for us to maybe set aside some time to fast and to pray and to really get into his word. <clears throat> this um, is also a time where Jesus withdrew into the desert for 40 days as he prepared to go to the cross for our sins, for our healing, and for our salvation. How many of you know that that's important? We ought to be grateful for this time of Lent season. It is a time that Christ chose to withdraw himself and go away for 40 days to prepare to go to the cross for our sins for our deliverance, for our healing, for our salvation. I tell you, I don't know about you, but I am grateful for the cross. I am grateful for Jesus going to the cross for my salvation, for my sins, for my healing, and for my deliverance. And because he did this for us, during this Lent season, we should take the opportunity to review our relationship with Christ review our lives and renew our commitment to him it's just an opportunity to really just focus in on him and give him more of our time to set away some of those things that take up so much of our time and we, and we know what they are it could be the tv social media whatever it is that takes away your time during this lent season it's a time to turn those things aside set them aside and really focus in on christ and 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 what he's done for us on the cross in other words this is a good time to take introspect on our heart. Somebody say, it's a heart thing. It's a heart thing. That's the subject tonight. It's a heart thing. H-E-A-R-T. It is a heart thing. 
And how many of us know how important our heart is, not just in the natural, because it does keep us living. So we are thankful for that. But spiritually, how important our heart is. God has taken the time to pour out his love into our hearts. And we should desire to keep our hearts aligned with his word. We should desire to make sure that our heart is in agreement with his word. The heart is one of the most important things to Christ. And we as believers need to make sure it is one of the most important things to us spiritually and in the natural. Now, I did some research because I do some research every now and again. And so based on my research, the heart is in the Bible somewhere around 826 times. The heart is cited in the Bible around 826 times. The brain is not in there at all. So that lets us know the heart is important to God. Our heart is important to Christ. What we do and what we say and how our heart receives and, 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 and um, ministers is important to Christ. Why, you might ask, is our heart important to Christ? Why is our heart important? Because if we, if, 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 because there's times that we should know that God is impressing things on our heart. God chooses and he looks at our heart. When we are born again believers, he changes our heart. When we are young, we are born into sin. And as we give our, Christ, our life to Christ, he comes in and he changes our heart. He gives us a pure heart to almost start all over again in life. And so that heart is so important to God. If we, if, if we allow situations, circumstances, hurt, disappointments to come into our heart and we don't release that thing to Christ, our heart can become hardened. And when our hearts become hardened, we can't hear from God. We can't forgive. We can't love like we're supposed to love. We can't uh, sow and, 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 and reach others like we're supposed to. We have to make sure that our heart does not become calloused based on the things of the world. Because if it is, we cannot hear from God. When our heart is hardened, it is no longer connected to God. We can't even hear and receive from him like we should when our heart is in a hardened place. It is a hard thing. And our heart must stay connected to God. The heart from a biblical perspective was thought to be almost like sort of a control center from which all of our decisions are made. So when we read about the heart in the Bible, it is about the place where you have your will, your attitude, your intentions, which is the source of your thoughts and your actions, your motives and your words. In other words, what I'm saying is, your, whatever is in your heart is going to come through in your actions. Whatever is in your heart is going to come through in your motives. Whatever is in your heart is going to come through in your words. So we have to make sure that we do all we can as believers to keep our hearts pure, to keep our hearts aligned with the word of God. Your heart is essentially you. Your heart is who you are. I remember years ago, when my kids were younger, and uh, I think Sorrell had to be probably maybe two, three, and, you know, Shayla is much older than Sorrell, and so a lot of times she would, you know, keep watch over Sorrell, and so when she would correct him or say things or, or tell him something that he needs to stop doing, or she would get on him about something, which she should have, because if he was not acting right, she had that permission to do so but every now and again she would get on him and he would just look at her and he would say Shayla you hurt me to my soul you hurt me to my heart and you know it was amazing that even at that young age he was reflecting and thinking and, and relaying re hurt to his heart and to his soul and so we have to remember uh, how important our heart is because even though our heart keeps our body in the natural living our heart keeps our soul thriving. And so our heart has to be in line with the word of God. It's so important. When your heart is in connection with God, it can choose what is right or good when it's needed. A heart not connected becomes confused when it's time to discern right from wrong or good from evil. 
Psalms 119 verse 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. When we need to make the right decisions, when we need to make a choice, we pray and we ask for discernment. But the choices that we make, it comes essentially from our heart. And so we have to make sure that, number one, the word is inside of our heart. So we have to hide God's word in our heart so that we may not sin against him. So that our hearts are still pure and aligned with his word. It is a hard thing. Your heart is important to Christ. Matthew 12, verses 34 through 35 says, O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man, out of the good treasures of the heart, bringeth forth good things. However, an evil man, out of the evil treasures, bringeth forth evil things. You want to make sure that you're bringing forth good things, especially as believers, because we are called to be the salt and the light in the earth. We are called by Christ to be a witness to others by the way we live. Our lifestyles are an example to the lost. So we are called to be a witness to others by the way we walk, by the way we talk, by the way we love, by the way we give, by the way we pray, by the way we trust. We are called to be salt and light in the earth. And therefore, we must bring forth good things so that those that are lost can see the good things and, and, and try to get to know who it is that we're serving. Our lives have got to be a testimony, so our hearts have to be in line with the word of God. Do your best to keep your heart pure because you are your heart. It's a hard thing. Matthew 5 and 8 says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And I know we all want to see God, so we got to keep our hearts pure. And I'm going to tell you, the one that can help us keep our hearts pure is Christ. And that comes from having a relationship with him. Some things we cannot do in and of ourselves. We have to rely on Christ to help us. But we have to make a choice to have the right things in our heart. We have to make a choice to make sure the wrong things are not harboring and, and, and residing in our hearts. What's inside of us is the root of what comes out of us. That is true. What is inside of us is the root of what comes out of us. So we got to have good in, so good comes out. God is much more concerned that the things we do come from a pure heart. He's not concerned about how we dress, how we look. He's not concerned about how many scriptures we can memorize, although it's good to have the word in your heart. He's concerned about our heart. He's concerned about us as believers having a pure heart because we all know that he looks at the heart. Man may look at the outer appearance, but God is looking at our heart constantly, daily. We cannot hide our heart from God. We cannot hide our heart from God. We might can hide it from men. We might can hide it from people. We might can hide it, cover it up, dress it up, however you want to think about it. We cannot hide our heart from God. He knows everything that's going on on the inside of our heart. So we have to make sure that it aligns with the word of God. And if it doesn't, you have an opportunity to repent and ask God to clean your heart, to change your heart, to help you walk in forgiveness, to help you walk in love. He can do it. When we allow the wrong stuff, and everybody knows what their stuff is, our sin, or sin to enter our hearts and stay there, our heart becomes further away from God and becomes hardened to the point where the heart becomes closed to God and his voice. We will begin to resist God and God's ways. We have to ask God to help us remove the stuff. And everybody has some stuff. Don't, don't, don't ever think that you're perfect and don't have stuff that you need help with. And, and Christ is able to help us get rid of our stuff, get rid of our sin, so that our heart is in the right place, so that we can hear from him and we can hear his voice. Because we don't want to live a life where we're resisting God because our heart is hardened. We don't want to live a life where we can't hear his voice because our heart is hardened. It is a hard thing. But the good news is we can prevent having our heart hardened with God's help. 
So you might ask on tonight, but what can I do? What can I do to make sure my heart is lined up with God? What can I do to make sure I am focusing on my heart in this season? I'm going to give you some points on some things you can do. And, and, and it's important, just like in the natural, how we go to our doctors, we get our physicals, we get our exams. I hope you all are doing that because it's important that you do it so that you can remain healthy and get checked out. All right. So please go see your doctors yearly like you're supposed to. But just as we do that, we need to make time for a routine checkup or exam on our spiritual heart. The same way this heart is so important in the natural. But I'm going to tell you what, it's even more important in the spiritual, because when we die, we want our, our soul and our heart and we want to go to heaven. So that natural heart is not going to get you there. But the spiritual heart. The heart that's connected to Christ, the heart that loves like he wants us to love, that heart will get us to heaven. And so you want to make sure that you are taking a routine exam and check up on your spiritual heart. How can we do that? Well, number one, you need to make sure your heart is pumping correctly. If our heart is not pumping correctly naturally, it could lead to heart failure. Now, I'm no doctor. But I did do some research for, for this message now. I'm not a medical doctor, so don't, don't say Minister Mache told No, I'm not a medical doctor. I'm, I'm bringing you the word. But I did do a little research for this message, all right? So if our heart is not pumping correctly, naturally it could lead to heart failure. For your heart uh, to pump correctly in the natural, it has to be strong. Things like high blood pressure, and other things gradually leaves your heart too weak or too stiff to fill up and pump efficiently. Well, in order to have a strong heart spiritually, we must stay connected to God so our heart can stay strong and pump the word of God in and out, in and out. As we get that word into our hearts, we got to pump it back out to others who don't even know him. We got to be able to pump it out in situations when we are feeling down or discouraged or defeated. You got to be able to pump that word out. So in order to pump that word out, you got to get that word in. Right? It's just like blood. We got to have blood flowing in and out of our arteries, in and out of our heart in order for it to stay healthy. We got to have the word of God in and out of our hearts in order for our hearts to stay strong and to stay healthy. If we are not connected to God, our hearts can fail spiritually. It will not pump in or out the right things or the spiritual things if it is hardened. Instead of staying connected to other things like social media, just don't spend a whole lot of time on it, but you can go to it, but don't let it consume you, right? Don't let other things consume your time that you should be giving to Christ so that you can stay connected to him. Because listen, this is the thing. When we are not connected to Christ and situations and circumstances happen in our lives, we don't even know how to pray. We become defeated. We become depressed. We become sad because we're not connected to our power source. If we're connected to God, he gives us the power to fight in the midst of defeat. He gives us the power to stand when we feel like we're being knocked down. He gives us the power to pray when our bodies feel like they're sick. He gives us the power to command a thing in his name and watch it come forth. We have to stay connected to our power source because we are nothing. Even though some people may think they are, we are nothing in and of ourselves. We are nothing without Christ. It is in him that we live, we move, and we have our being. Why not stay connected to your power source? You have to stay connected. Take a few moments daily to connect with God. It is important. How to stay connected to God. I'm going to give you a few pointers on how you can stay connected to God. Because it's important that you take time to, to just really make sure you're connected to your power source. So one way you can stay connected to God is through God's word. James 4 and 8 says, draw near to God, he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hand, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double-minded. We can stay connected to God through his word. It's simple. You draw nigh to him, he's going to draw nigh to you. Draw nigh to his word. Draw nigh to prayer. He'll draw nigh to you. Secondly, how can we stay connected to God? Through prayer. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17 says pray without ceasing. Now that doesn't mean you walk around praying 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. 
But that does mean that you take time out to pray. When we pray, we are communicating with God. How can we go day in and day out, over and over and over, and not communicate with the person that we say we love? Christ is first in our life. We have to communicate with him. The same way you communicate with your spouse, your siblings, your friends, whomever it is, because they are important to you, Christ is even more important to us because he is the one that's keeping us alive. He's the one that went to the cross for our, for our sins, for our salvation, for our deliverance. Why wouldn't you want to stay connected to him? So number one, through God's word. Number two, through prayer. And number three, through worship. Psalms 95 and 16, I'm sorry, Psalms 95 and 6 says, Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. And Ephesians 5 and 19 tells us to sing and make music from the heart to the Lord. When we worship God, the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. When we are worshiping and praising God, what that means when the word says he inhabits, that means he just comes in and he sits in the midst of us. His presence just shows up in the midst of our worship, in the midst of our praise. And so when we are focusing on God's word, when we're focusing on praying, when we're focusing on worshiping, our heart is being filled with God's love. We're being filled with God's strength. Our heart is being filled with the things of God. We have to stay connected. So number one, you got to make sure your heart is pumping correctly. And in order for your heart as a believer to pump correctly, you got to stay connected to your power source. And we know that's Christ. Number two, check for blockages. If there are blockages, the blood cannot flow properly to your heart. It just can't. That's medically now. It cannot flow to your heart. Don't you know if there are spiritual blockages, the love of God cannot flow properly? If we have spiritual blockages in our heart, things that are hindering us from hearing God, things that are hindering us from loving like we should love, things that are hindering us from doing the things that we know to do, things that are right, things that are holy. If we're doing things based on the wrong motives, we have blockages. Let's go to Ephesians 4.27. Ephesians 4.27 says, And do not give the devil an opportunity to lead you into sin by holding a grudge or nurturing anger or harboring resentment or cultivating bitterness. Those things are blockages that can mess up our heart if we allow them to. Let's read down a little further. Ephesians, same chapter 4. Verse 31, it says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, resentment, strife, fault finding and slander be put away from you along with every kind of malice, all spitefulness, verbal abuse. All those things are blockages. And we know as humans, things happen. We get hurt. Somebody may say something you don't like. Somebody may do something to you that offended you. People may walk in and out your life. Disappointments, discouragements, those things happen. But what we can't allow to happen is allow those things to settle into our heart. Where it becomes, it goes from being hurt to now becoming bitter. And when we allow bitterness, anger, resentment, fault finding to just reside in our hearts when we allow sin, unconfessed sin, no repentance to just, just rest in our hearts, our hearts become hardened. I'm telling you saints, our heart is an important thing to Christ because if we have bitterness in there as a blockage, if we have anger in there as a blockage, it's no way you can have love in there. Our hearts are not meant spiritually to contain all of those things. And when we walk around with those things in our heart, trust me, it's going to come out in our actions. 
Our motives are going to display exactly what's in our heart. And if these blockages are in there, it's going to show in our motives. We can't allow these things to enter or remain in our hearts. Say again, it is a heart thing. We have to be able to forgive and shake it off and move forward. Pastor preached a couple of Sundays ago, and in his message, he talked about shaking it off, shaking off the offense of anger. We can't allow that anger to stay there. Even though someone may have hurt you or made you mad, and you had a right to be angry, we have to forgive. And this is the thing, we have to forgive quickly. Because the longer we hold on to that thing, the longer it's going to turn into something else in our heart. And God is not pleased. In order for Christ to forgive us of our sins, we have to forgive others. We can't expect God to do something that we're not able to do. If he's forgiven us, we have to forgive others so we can remove those blockages from our heart. Blockages will eventually, and let me go back here. We have to be able to forgive, shake it off, move forward from offenses. If we don't, we are only fooling ourselves and others, but not God. What do I mean by that? If you're walking around with all of this stuff in your heart, but your, your hands are raised, you know, you're shouting the glories down. People may see all of that outside stuff. It doesn't matter to God. He's looking at the heart. He's looking at what you're saying, what you're doing, what your motives are saying, how you're treating people that may have done you wrong. you got to have a heart of forgiveness. you got to forgive kick quickly, shake off the offense of anger, and move forward. Shake it off. Tell your neighbor, shake it off. <laughs> you got to shake it off, I'm telling you. Because this is the thing, you want your heart right with God above all else. Because guess what? He's not having it in heaven. He's not having us as believers walk around in heaven with bitterness, anger, can't speak to this one, can't speak to that one. My motives are wrong. He's not having that in heaven. So we got to get it right. Because somebody's not going to go to heaven if your heart is not right. If you ain't loving like Christ says to love, if you ain't forgiving like he says to forgive, you're harboring that stuff in your heart. I don't care how much you can fool people. We cannot fool God. He's looking at our hearts day in and day out. He's searching our hearts. And that's what's important to him. Man, I'm going to tell you, that heart is important. The heart is important. It governs our actions, our attitudes, our motives, and our words. Luke 6, verse 45b, for of the abundance of the heart, and we all know it, the mouth speaketh. Basically, what's in there is going to come out that mouth. You might can hold it down for a few months. You might can hold it down for a year or so, but I'm going to tell you, it's going to come out. It's coming out. So if in your heart you got all types of cursing, malice, anger, I'm going to tell you it's going to come out when you least expect it. Because this is the thing. A lot of times, Christ, God will allow things to happen so that he can change us. Some things we won't change if he doesn't expose. So he wants our hearts to be right. He loves us so much. He cares about us so much. So a lot of times, he'll expose a thing. He'll expose our hearts so that we can take a step back and get our hearts right with him. It is important to do a heart check. Make sure you don't have blockages. Make sure it's pumping correctly because you're connected to that power source. Amen. Let me see. This heart is so good. When we have blockages in the natural, that pain is not always felt in the heart. Sometimes it's felt in the shoulder, in our arms, in our back, in our jaw. You know, when you have blockages and your heart is getting ready to fail, or you may be getting ready to have a, a slight heart attack, and trust me, I'm not speaking it on nobody. I'm not a medical doctor, but I know this too can happen. So you may not feel it in your heart, but you will feel it in your arms, your back. Some people say your jaw, your stomach. Same thing. When we have blockage spiritually, sometimes we don't even feel it in our heart because the heart is so hardened. We are angry. We're mad. We are hurt. But I'm going to tell you, those blockages will play out naturally. It'll play out through stress. You're wondering why you're having headaches, stomach aches, stomach problems, all types of sickness. Now, I'm not saying every sickness comes because you have some unforgiveness or some bitterness in your heart. But what I am saying is those things can lead 
to other things happening in the natural. If your heart is so hardened and you're so angry and you're so hurt because somebody did you wrong and you never let it go, I'm going to tell you, it's going to play out. You're going to be stressed and you're not going to know why. It's anger. It's, ang it's anger. Your stomach's going to be upset. It's anger. Your stomach's going to, you know, it can cause, also stress can cause so much harm to our bodies. Stress can just break away at our bodies, cause us to have migraines, cause us to have so many types of ailments, and we don't know where it's coming from. Check your heart. Get on your face. Pray. Ask God to reveal it to you. Sometimes we've been holding on to things so long, we forgot that we're holding on to it, and we just move on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing when we've never even forgiven. So you, sometimes you have to pray and ask God, show me my heart. Show me me. Instead of pointing the finger at this one and this one, and the Bible speaks against fault finding. Fault finding, you're pointing the finger. You're calling out other people's faults. Don't do that. The Bible speaks against it. We just read it in Ephesians. Take the time to search yourself. Ask God to show you you. Show you what's in your heart that you may not have let go of so that you can repent and move forward in Christ. We cannot harbor this stuff in our hearts. We must release it to God. So what can we do to release that? Let's go back to Ephesians 4.32. What are some things we might can do at, at the end of 30, uh, Ephesians 4, and we're going to go down to verse 32. Be kind, helpful to one another, tenderhearted. That means compassionate, understanding, forgiving one another readily and freely, just as God in Christ also forgave you. That's how you can start working on those blockages. Be kind. Be kind to people. It doesn't hurt to smile. We don't want fake kindness. That's not good. God is still looking at the heart. We don't want that. Genuine kindness because your heart is in the right place. Helpful to one another. Tenderhearted. Be compassionate. Show some compassion for other people. Understanding. Understand. Other people have things going on. Understand. Other people may be hurting. Have some understanding and compassionate. Forgiving one another. My Bible in the Amplified Version says readily and freely. Almost just like, I forgive you. Even if you don't tell them, even if the person doesn't know it, even if someone doesn't even come and apologize, you have to still forgive. You may not ever get an apology, ever. You still have to forgive readily and freely, basically quickly, and move on. Just like when we mess up, and we do, and we go to Christ, and we repent, he forgives us. His, our sin is separated from him as far as the east is from the, the north is from the south. Our sins, says his, the word says he remembers them no more. That's how we're supposed to be. If Christ is living on the inside of us and we're saying, okay, I forgive this person, we can't remember it anymore. We can't still say, I forgive, but you know what? I'm not going to forget it. I'm going to hold on. I'm not going to forget it. Every time I see you, I'm going to think about it. You haven't forgiven. That blockage is still in your heart. So you got to find a way to truly forgive, and you got to do it freely. You got to do it readily. You got to do it quickly so that you can move on, so that your heart can stay pure for God. Amen. It is a heart thing. Tell somebody else it's a heart thing. Number three, how can we make sure that we are, our heart is right with God? Keep your heart healthy. So number one, check, make sure your heart is pumping correctly. In order for it to pump correctly, get connected to God through his word, through prayer, through worship. Number two, we said check for blockages. Make sure there's no bitterness, no anger, no wrath, no fault finding, all of those things in Ephesians. I'm going to tell you, Ephesians chapter 4, put that in the Amplified Version, study it over and over and over. I'm gonna it will speak to your heart. It will make you say, okay, let me get rid of these things in my life. I'm going to move on from it, but I'm going to tell you, it's so important because our heart is not right with Christ if we are harboring those things in Ephesians in our hearts. And we got to get our hearts right with Christ because if not, we're fooling ourselves 
and, and we're basically living a spiritual lie. It's nowhere in the world we can say we love Christ and we don't love our fa- a brother man. We don't love the person that sits beside us. We don't love our family. It's just no way possible. So whatever it is that's hindering you from showing the love of Christ to your, your friends, co-workers, family, whoever it is, whatever is hindering you, get to the root of it. And I, I, I pray you get to the root of it soon. Tomorrow's not promised to any of us. And when we leave here, we want to make sure our heart is right because that's what God is looking at. He's not looking at how I wear my hair. He's not looking at this jacket I got on. He's not looking at the house I live in. He's not looking at the job I go to. He's not looking at the car I drive. He's not looking at any of that stuff. It's not important. He's not looking at how much I sing, how much I worship, none of it. He's looking at the heart. And we need to make sure our heart is in line with his word. Keep your heart healthy. Proverbs 4, verse 23 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Just as we must do things in the natural to keep a healthy heart, we must do things spiritually to keep a healthy heart for God. If we don't keep our heart healthy in the natural, we can encounter a setback. If we don't keep that heart healthy, the doctor done told us what to do, he done told us everything to do, and we're not doing it, and we're not keeping our heart healthy, we can encounter a, set, a setback. We can encounter heart failure. We can encounter death, unfortunately. We got to keep our heart right uh, in the natural. The same is true spiritually. We can encounter a setback if we're not keeping our heart healthy. What is a set, setback in the spiritual? Backsliding. We can backslide to our old ways, our old habits, our old the things that we used to do in the world if our heart is not healthy spiritually. Or if we choose to go on day in and day out, day in and day out, and not checking our heart and getting it right, we can experience spiritual death. We're no longer connected to God. We no longer can hear his voice. We're just wandering on our own. We have to make sure our heart is healthy spiritually. I'm going to give you some ways to keep your heart healthy, and then we're going to bring this home. All right, here's some ways to keep that heart healthy spiritually, and some of these are in the natural too. So what can you do to keep your heart healthy? Number two, watch what you are taking in. What you take in, you're going to spit out. Watch what you are taking in, and then watch what you're thinking on. Philippians 4 and 8 says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So think on things that are good. Be mindful what you watch on TV. Be mindful what you hear on the radio. All of that stuff that you're you're taking in, it's going to come out. So to keep your heart healthy, watch what you're taking in and watch what you're thinking on. Think on the word of God. And as you think on that word of God, it just gets right into your heart. It just gets right into your heart. All right? Secondly, exercise. I know I need to do some exercise. We all need to do some exercise, all right? (laughs) But not just exercising in the natural. Exercise the word of God. Psalms 1, verses 1 through 3 says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, his precepts, his teaching, He meditates day and night. Joshua 1 and 8, and it's not on your screens, but that's okay, says, The book of the law shall not depart from my mouth, but you shall read and meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will be successful. Exercise the word of God. Keep that heart healthy. Exercise. Keep it healthy in the natural if you exercise. Next. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. There are people that walk every single day. I try to, but I get busy sometimes and I don't. But keep moving, keep moving towards God spiritually. You want to keep your heart healthy? Keep moving towards God. Philippians 3, 13 and 14 says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before me, Daily, keep moving towards God in his word, through worship, through prayer. Keep moving towards God. Next, 
Say no to bad habits. Now, this is the thing. The Bible says, who the son sets free is free indeed. Once he sets you free from things, don't go back and pick it back up. Don't go back and pick up those bad habits. Once you pray and ask God to heal your heart, to remove the bitterness, remove the anger, remove the hurt, don't, don't go back and get it the next week or, or the next month. Don't pick up those things. Say no to those bad habits. Picking up past offenses uh, and be mindful of what you think on. So instead of focusing on the past offense, what hurt you, what made you bitter, what made you anger, angry, don't think on those things. Again, think on the word of God. Philippians 4 and 8 tells us what to think on. Think on those things that are good and true, honest, a good report. Think on those things and say no to bad habits. They're not healthy for your heart in the natural. They're not healthy for your heart spiritually. Next, take care of yourself. Take, you got to take care of yourself. We have to take care of ourselves naturally because this is the other thing. We want to do the work of the Lord. We are here on this earth to do the work of the Lord for the kingdom. We can't do it if we're sick all the time. we got to take care of our bodies. This is our temple. This is what he's given us. We have to take care of it. He's already done his part. He went to the cross. Jesus died for our sins. He died for our healing. By his stripes, we are healed. He's already done our, his part. Now we got to do our part. Take care of yourself physically, but take care of yourself, more importantly, spiritually. You got to guard your heart. Proverbs 4.23, and we've already read it, says, above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Everything you do, it flows from this heart. I'm telling you, the heart is important or God wouldn't, it wouldn't be in the Bible. He wouldn't have it in the Bible 826 times. This heart is important. It is a hard thing. Next, maintain regular checkups. Just like you do in the natural. You got to go to that doctor and get those checkups. More importantly, you got to keep a check on your heart and do all you can to walk in love towards God and others. I'm going to tell you, your heart is so important. And in order to show the love of Christ, we have to do a regular checkup on our heart and make sure we're walking in love towards others. Yep, towards that person that hurt you. Yep, towards the person that did you wrong. Yep, towards the people that laid you off. Yep, you got you to gotta do it. You got to show love. You got to. Because he commands us to. I'm getting ready to read a scripture. Mark 12, 30 and 31. It says, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, which is your thoughts and your understanding, and with all your strength. This is the second, that you shall unselfishly love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Right there. That regular checkup so that you can walk in love because his word tells us to. And what we don't want to be is disobedient to the word of God. The more we're disobedient, the more we don't do the things of God, the more our heart becomes hardened to the word, just like it becomes hardened to God's voice. We resist him, it becomes our heart becomes hardened, and we don't want that. We want our hearts to be pure. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We want our hearts to be pure. We got to love God, and we got to love our neighbors as ourselves. I love me. I really do. So I got to love others the way I love me or better than myself. Only you and God know what is in your heart. So you have to keep a check on your heart and ensure you are releasing things, releasing people, and forgiving quickly, repenting and walking in love. Remember, it is a hard thing, hard thing, when it comes to God. Because he's looking at our hearts. Remember that. He's looking at our hearts. If you don't remember anything else tonight, remember he's looking at our hearts. And if we want to be pleasing in his sight, the one thing we can do is make sure our heart is aligned with the word of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your word. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you are such a forgiving God. We thank you for your mercy, your grace that is new to us each and every day. 
God, we thank you for giving us another opportunity to make things right with you, oh God. Lord, you are important to us. And we thank you for loving us in this Lenten season. We thank you for uh, going to the cross. Lord, we thank you for this time of Lent, a time to reflect on all that you've already done for us and a time for us to take introspect on our hearts and how we can love even the more to please you. Our desire should be to please you, oh God. And Lord, I pray right now that on tonight, Lord, that you will help us, oh God, to be better to love better, to love stronger, to forgive. Oh, God, help us to understand your word even the more so that our heart can line up with your word. And, God, we thank you for loving us, for caring about us unconditionally. Help us to love others the way you love us, oh, God. And, Lord, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. I tell you, on tonight, if there's anyone watching, if you are visiting with us, or even if you are a member of Christ Family Church, and you have not given your heart to God, it is no way you can do these things that we talked about tonight. There's no way that your heart is lined up with the Word of God if you've never given your heart to Christ. So tonight, if you're that person and you want to accept Christ, that means you want Him to live on the inside of you. You want to love like Him. You can do that on tonight by a simple prayer and I'm going to lead you through it you can say Father God I am a sinner thank you for forgiving me of my sins I ask you on tonight to come into my heart save me oh God Jesus I know that you died and you rose again just for me so I invite you tonight to come into my heart save my soul forgive me of my sins if you prayed that prayer tonight, you're saved. It's just that simple. And now you can start locking into the word so you can make sure that you have his love on the inside of your heart. How do you do that? Get locked in to a church. If you don't have a church, if you're not a member of a church, you can join Christ Family Church. All you got to do is email the church. Um, and the email will be on the screen. You can email the church. Let them know that you accepted Christ on tonight. Let them know that you need prayer. Let them know you want to join. Someone will reach out to you because this is important. And Christ Family Church is open to all people. All people are welcome in Christ Family Church. So if you got saved on tonight, email the church. Let them know you gave your life to Christ. If you want to join the church, email the church and let them know you want to join Christ Family Church. It is a great place to be. Amen. So we thank you um, on tonight for listening. The only other thing I'm going to say is just remind everyone as we close tonight, remember uh, Millennial Ladies of the session on this Friday with First Lady. It's going to be a great session. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a time uh, for you all to get together at 730 um, to have a girls chat. So uh, make sure that's on your calendars. And then also remember service on Sunday. You heard Pastor say it is Palm Sunday as we lead up to Easter Sunday. And so please take time on Sunday to log in, get online, get on there early. Make sure you're prayed up, you're ready for the word. Get on there, share it, post it, do all those things that we need to do so that you're ready to receive the word of God on Sunday morning. And I thank you all for receiving the word on tonight, for receiving me on tonight. And uh, I pray that you have a great rest of your night. Um, in Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen.